What's going on on my YouTube? It is, I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys and welcome to another installment of Celebrating Disney where each week I review and celebrate all things Disney regardless of quality, animated, or live action under the main Disney banner. Got a live action review this week and in today's video I'll be taking a look at the 2009 Disney nature film Earth. Of all the planets in our universe, there is only one that we know can support life. So Earth was released in the U.S. in 2009. It was actually first released in the U.K. in 2007, but Disney picked up the distribution rights in 2009. They launched it as the first film in their Disney Nature brand, and that set a new wave of nature documentaries in the Disney studio because Disney, back in like their heyday, like in the 50s, Walt Disney actually produced a bunch of nature documentaries called The True Life Adventures, and I might cover them on Celebrating Disney at some point, as I haven't seen too many of his original nature documentaries, but Walt Disney was passionate about nature and different animals and the environment and stuff, and so he was passionate about making these nature documentaries, and they were well received back in the day, and some of which even won Oscars, which is pretty cool. So... Years later, Disney revived Walt Disney's original concept and created the Disney Nature brand, and we've had Disney Nature films, at least one Disney Nature film every year ever since. The, the day this video is actually dropping, Earth Day 2022, Disney Nature's dropping a new film on Disney Plus about polar bears, which looks pretty fascinating as well. So Earth was the first Disney Nature film. It's actually an offshoot of the series Planet Earth, which was made by BBC. And that series, I think, aired in like 2006. And that's a really cool series. It's like an 11-part miniseries narrated by the legendary David Attenborough, which highlights different areas of Planet Earth, the various locations and the creatures that inhabit Planet Earth, the daily struggles, and the day-to-day -day lives of these uh, wonderful creatures that we live with. And... I watched that, uh, I think, in my fifth grade year. Somebody brought the DVD set and we watched them, and I was blown away by Planet Earth. I was just blown away by how they were able to film in some of these locations and showcase some really cool things with different creatures, and I was pretty much blown away by it. I actually need to revisit that series at some point. Uh, I thought that series was fantastic because over the years I've, gone back to this just through the Disney Nature film, which is pretty much a condensed version of what was filmed in the Planet Earth series. There was new footage shot for this Earth movie, but there was other footage that was recycled from the Planet Earth miniseries, and it's cobbled together in a 90-minute documentary film. Uh, depending on where you're from, uh, there's different narrators for this documentary. I know in the UK, when it was first released in 2007, it was narrated by Patrick Stewart, which is a really good choice to host a nature documentary. But here in the US, we got the legendary James Earl Jones to do the narration for this Disney nature documentary. And you couldn't get a perfect actor to do a nature documentary then. James Earl Jones, Darth Vader, Mufasa himself. I love hearing James Earl Jones' voice in documentaries like this. And he did a great job of you know, narrating the lives of these animals and showcasing the wonder and beauty of the planet that we all live in. And I just thought his narration was absolutely awesome. I think my two favorite narrators I've heard in nature documentaries like this James Earl Jones in this movie, Earth, and Morgan Freeman in March of the Penguins. Those are like your two best actors you have to do nature documentaries from now on. Those two are awesome. So, I actually first saw this movie in 2009 in theaters. Today, it's the only Disney nature film I've actually seen in theaters. I saw it with my mom and my sister at uh, the Dollar Theater. And even then, I was just blown away by the cinematography. Of course, some of the footage I had seen before is like, again, like I said, I've, I've saw the Planet Earth series before watching this Disney Nature film. And so some of it was brand new to me. Others was uh, 
you know, familiar footage that I was just blown away seeing in elementary school. So I've been a fan of this movie ever since I first saw it, whether the Planet Earth series where the footage was originally shot or what they did in this condensed version. And I guess as a detraction, I think some people can look at this and say, why did this movie need to exist? Because it's pretty much a condensed version of the Planet Earth series. I think for families, I guess if you have younger kids and they don't really want to watch an 11 part documentary series that might be too excessive and you still want kids to watch nature documentaries and see amazing creatures and beautiful cinematography and locations. This is a good alternative. It's only an hour and a half. It moves at a pretty good pace. There's so many cool creatures and there's uh, stories of different animals and their journeys and their challenges and their struggles and what they go through on a day-to-day -day journey in the span of a year. You see polar bears and elephants and humpback whales and there's various other creatures that pop up in there. Now, I had seen some parental complaints that the movie can get a little bit too harsh at times, where you see like animals eating other animals and there's characters that suffer because of like environmental concerns and other things like that. But I think the movie was trying to show as is what animals go through on a daily basis. Of course, animals eating others. It's showing, you know, how these creatures survive every day and how it's in their nature to do stuff like that. And you can't like really sugarcoat that, especially in a nature documentary. You have to document what these animals do on a day-to-day -day basis. And there is some, I guess, sadness to that. Like, especially we see the story with a polar bear who's struggling to survive and hunt for food and you know he's pouring the ice and then the ice melts and then he's like struggling to swim and struggling to find food uh, especially when he's ha his last resort is like walruses uh that sequence was absolutely brutal and it kind of devastated me when i first saw it but i see why it was there to show you know how some animals struggle and especially polar bears who are currently on like the endangered list for various reasons uh, I think the movie was smart to show uh, the struggle of survival for some of these creatures and the harshness of the terrain in the animal world that these creatures go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So I do respect what the filmmakers were trying to show in this movie. I don't think they should have sugarcoated it to appeal to younger kids and overprotective parents. I think I love that it was going for that grounded approach. And I respect the movie all the more for that. I think this movie works as a good standalone movie. Like, even if you've never watched the Planet Earth series, this might be a good gateway because of the shorter runtime. And if you love this movie, you'll love the Planet Earth series. I highly recommend checking that out as well. Uh, if you want to see, like, the more in-depth version of what was done in this movie... I think this movie works on its own terms. It was a great launching point for Disney Nature as a brand, as they've made some pretty remarkable movies ever since. I also recommend movies like Oceans and Elephant and African Cats, which are pretty good Disney Nature movies as well. This one, I still think is the best Disney Nature film. Uh, I think for me, if you have quality narration in these movies, they do wonders and Adding James Earl Jones into this one, I thought, was the icing on the cake. This movie does have beautiful cinematography. Like, every time I rewatch this film, I'm just blown away by seeing some of the locations on display and how they were able to pull off some of these shots. Like, there's this one shot uh, that where you see this good view of this very expanded, expansive waterfall. And this came out... Before, in the age before, you know, you can do drone technology to pull some of these shots off today. And I was just blown away by how they were able to get that shot for a movie like this before the age of drones. And I thought that was pretty impressive. Also, stay throughout the credits as uh, they actually share some behind-the-scenes documents of how the filmmakers got some of these shots and how they were able to get up close with some of these creatures. And that's really awesome to see as well. I do highly recommend Earth. It's a fantastic Disney nature documentary. Beautiful cinematography. Amazing creatures on display. I think this movie is really awesome. I love what the filmmakers were trying to say with this movie. Spanning a year in the life of these animals. And James Earl Jones is just the extra icing on the cake. 
fantastic Disney nature documentary, a good movie to watch for Earth Day, and any day if you are in the mood for a nature documentary. So I'll be giving Earth a four and a half out of five stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting an 83 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Disney Nature's Earth as part of my Celebrating Disney series where I review and celebrate all things Disney regardless of quality, animated, or live action under the main Disney banner. And if you're a fan of Disney, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out my Celebrating Disney playlist where you can check out all the other Disney reviews I've covered on this series so far, whether my animated or live action reviews. If you're new to this series, I usually alternate between animated and live action reviews. My animated reviews I do in chronological order, from the Disney animation films and the canon to the direct-to-video sequels along with the Pixar films. My live action reviews I do in no particular order. They're freestyle and I leave room for requests. If there's any live action film or franchise you'd like me to tackle in the future, feel free to share your requests in the comments below. The past two Celebrating Disney videos, I actually did two live action reviews back to back. I did the Olivia Rodrigo film and Disney Nature's Earth. I mainly did that so I can coincide a Disney Nature movie with Earth Day. So, to make up for that, the next two reviews I'll be doing on this series will be two animated reviews and then I'll go back to the normal animated live action alternate. So, next week on Celebrating Disney, I'll do another animated review, and it'll be for the 2003 sequel, The Jungle Book 2. I look forward to revisiting this film once again, even though I think it's a massive step down from the original classic, but we'll see how it goes on rewatch. So be on the lookout for my review of The Jungle Book 2 coming to the channel next week. But if you've seen Earth, let me know down in the comments below, would you follow the film? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!